gentlemen, boys and girls, as I pause the trough, <clears throat> we have a line battle today, except the line battle is slightly different. We have the Kingdom of Swadia versus the Kingdom of the Nords. This is Native Mountain of Blade. Look at this. Isn't it wonderful? Look at these fine fellows. Ah, crossbowmen. From the 77Y, no less. And also, Royal Guards, the 8th Royal. Look at those guys. Don't they look wonderful? They're studded armour. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And so, you have plenty of people moving out from the 33rd. And there is Colonel Mostman's. Look at these knights. Don't they look fantastic? And so, let me tell you about the teams on the Kingdom of the Nords. We have the 37th, the 15th, the 37th foot in there as well. And let's see. That's pretty much it, really, on that side. Uh, a little bit outnumbered for the opposing side, which are the Kingdom of Swadia. We have the 77Y, the 8th Royal, the 33rd in there. And a few other people. And the Guard Grens as well. No grenadiers here. There are no grenades. So, anyway, there is Abercrampy. And let's see who's at the front there. Look at that. Now, there's, there's a look you don't see very often. That is Major Malekith. Now, obviously, it's hard to identify him under that uh, waist bin he's got on his head. But you can now see these guys moving out. Now, they've obviously got mounted cavalry as well. So there's Sir Brutiful. And here is the Mounted Cavalry. Oh, you can hear the archers starting already. So there is the King. Now, if ever you wanted to become a Republican, here is justification for doing so. Because not only is Gaz King, but he's also Scottish. So, never mind. So there we go. Everybody moving out. Let's see what's going on. So this, obviously, is the Swadians. And let's see if we can find out what the Nords are doing. Oh, look at all these Nords. Troll dude in there as well. And... Snipers. Look at this. This is fantastic. So you've got Shieldmen at the front here. Like Scrotum. You've got Archers behind them. And then you've got Troopers then making the move across the water. Under the control of Lieutenant Anders. Now look... Look at that shield front and back to protect them. And they've got soldiers behind them. There's brutal berserker. And loads of berserkers in there as well. Look at that. So they're going to go in and just chop the crap out of people with loads of bits and pieces. So, ah, here we go. <clears throat> now these guys, obviously, they're on light horses. So they've got immense speed. The heavier armoured... Knights, there's some dismounted knights at the back here. You can see, oh, there we go, crossbow, crossbowman green pills taking an arrow to the thorax. So you can see over here, let's see, is this the crossbowman over here? No, this is another section of the Nords by the looks of it. Now, what's going on up here? Okay, so it looks like they've moved back and the archers are putting an absolute arrow storm over the river. Look at this. And you've now got their troops moving up on this side. You've obviously got the dismounted knights at the rear. So here we go. These guys making use of the shields provided to them. Oh, and out come the javelins. Look at this. Javelin. Javelin stabby goodness all over the place. Out come so many axes. Look at all those axes. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. So many axes. Throw those axes, everyone. Mighty choppers being thrown, and any minute now, we're going to have a bit of a rush. There we go. The rush has been given. The 8th Royal are charging into battle. Under the... Oh, under the... There we go. Look at that. Berserkers versus the Royal Guard. And as you can see, this is melee only. This is fantastic. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Let's see who this poor stud is at the back here. There's Honey Luke's. 
Private Honey Loops. Oh, he's being multiply done over by members of the Royal Guard. Oh, look at that. It's fantastic stuff going on here. This is good things indeed as we're watching Honey Loops wander around the battlefield. Now, obviously, it's not as obvious. Oh, an angry Scots person. Look out. Um, it's not as obvious uh, to identify your enemy as it would be in Napoleonic Wars. So everyone's kind of just got functional armor and uh, stuff like that. They don't really want to identify themselves to the enemy. So, you know, when you say shoot everyone who's red, you know, they could be... Oh, stab in the back from the angry Scott into Huskull Madsen. So... <laughs> as to is saying he feels bad seeing his ancestors on the other team. So, yeah, that is technically true, being uh, a gentleman from Norway, or from the Nordic countries, we should say. Crossbowman! Now, under the control of Marksman Mr. Blue, and it makes sense that they would actually make the light infantry in as crossbowmen, because they've got the superior accuracy, and there is Major Malekith. And as you can see, they've been shooting at him a bit today. So, shield wall goes up. Look at that shield wall. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that wasn't a very good shield wall. Oh, dear. Poor old Ernie got hit with a headshot. Oh, look at that. Somebody's dropped his shield. He's trying to get his new shield back up again. Oh, look at that. So much fire coming in. And these guys now trying to hide around the bridge. So this is very similar. There we go. The charge has been given. Mal leading the charge in. Let's see. Let's follow Mal as he goes in. And you've also then got one of the uh, mounted knights in there as well. Sir Dutch Ref with his mighty pole. Yeah, don't say a word. And you can see now, obviously, these guys here, the 15th Hussar, attacking this pile. This pile of Huskals in there doing their thing and the archers and other people like that. So there we go. There's, there's Epic Toast in there as well. Going in for a mass chopper attack. Look at this. With the battle cry of knee, it's got to be done. And then they took an axe to the knee, and it's all history. So you can see there, one of the Nords still attacking. And, oh dear, somebody just got shot in the back. Oh, that's painful. That's going to leave a mark. So you can see now, multiple members here. Oh, there's the Dutch ref still, still in there. It looks like he's lost his lance, then dives in over the top of the enemy. So you've also then got uh, this bunch of guys here who are also trying to deal with the amount of arrows coming in. <clears throat> and axes, obviously. So here is Scottish Toast going in for an attack. And unfortunately being double teamed, triple teamed, Scottish Toast is being well and truly cooked. So there's, oh my goodness, look at this. Look at how many arrows he's got in him. And axes and everything else. There are virtual hedgehogs going on here. This is fantastic. Oh dear. Okay, maybe not in the case of Mr. Blue. Catching a nice archery shot from Dyer. The killing guy is dead. Oh dear. And so, few remaining members here of the Nordic countries. There's Archer Sparrow, Cadet Food. Random arrow. And now the forces are starting to split up and getting into individual melees. So Gastir Strider against Pirate, a random guy. Let's watch him see how he does. Oh, look at that. Because the thing is with the blocking and the melee and all this kind of stuff. Oh, nice kill. So let's see. Oh, no. Random guy being attacked from the back. And bear in mind that this guy is, a, is kind of like a spearman. Look at that. You see the way he dodged in between the two guys. And unfortunately gets taken down. So poor old random guy taken down by Strider. Who is this last man standing? It's Abba Crampy. He's got a sword on his back. Is he going to go out in style? Let's see how things go. He gets the sword out. He's going for the stab. He's trying to do his best against three other enemies. And these guys have got pretty good shields. Oh dear. Oh no. There's a large man with a big chopper. Come flying in. And the Nords have won the round. Moving on to the next round. And so we return with the second round. And as you can see, this is the Nordic encampment. Complete with lots of berserkers with large choppers from the 15th. You've then got these bunch of guys as well. A couple of spearmen. Nice large shields. 
So the Nords with their massive shields. And obviously they've got these shields front and back to protect their back. So let's see. Ah, archers. And obviously these guys. So there's Scrotum Smith. And let's go and see how these fine fellows are doing. The Kingdom of Swadia. Sir Brutiful on his horse. Complete with waste bin on his head. Colonel Mossman's leading his archers forward. Colonel Leonidas from the 33rd. And obviously, everybody moving up. Look at this. So you can see pretty much it's an established strategy. You have the shieldmen up the front. And obviously archers in between them. There's Thomas looking very good with a cake tin on his head for some reason. And there's obviously Brathers. So this is the crossbowman line. Now obviously that's looking good. That's looking good there. So crossbow longer to reload maybe. But easier to aim. We shall see. There's Major Malekith leading the Royal Guard troopers. Likes of all these guys here onwards. Complete, including a second caked in head. And there he is. Aztir himself. And Corporal Ryan at the rear. And there's Sir Brutiful. Obviously on his clippy clock. So let's see. As most of the battles seem to happen across the river. So yeah. There we go. These guys now having to hold their shields at the right angle because of the arrows coming in. Just like that, see? Perfect timing. So these are long distance arrows that are coming in from the opposing forces. We are flying through that arrow collection there. Now, look at this. Isn't this fantastic? Look at these guys. Budgenator! Fear the... Budgenator. Budgies in war always got to be feared. And so you can see now, here is the shield wall with the bowmen behind it, combinations of longbows. Now these look to be very longbows, so they might give additional range and improve things in that respect. So extra punching power that the crossbows simply can't provide. Here is your cavalry troopers, McNuby. And now, look at this, so it looks like the opposing forces have actually ca caught on to this and are now moving over to fight on the same side of the river. Now, oh, here we go, here we go, it's on. In come the enemy cav, but they ride right past this bunch of 37th. Complete with Budgenator looking on fiercely. Ah, uh, looks like they were going for the Knights. They were going for the Knights. King Gaz killing someone. As shocking as that may be. There's Lord Hovis. Looking for potential enemy with his lance. No comments about Hovis. And a large prick. Anyway. <laughs> so, that's interesting. Because what they've now done is they've moved behind the protection... Of their crossbowmen. So you can see here the crossbowmen. Providing additional cover fire. As now Sir Brutiful moves up. And here come loads of axes. And primarily I'd say it's javelins rather than axes. So you can see them all flying up here. God damn these guys have got great throwing arms. I'll give them that. So there's from 37 foot, there's a volunteer midget. Look at all these arrows on the ground. Oh, wow. It's fantastic, isn't it? So there's Rider Alien, who does not appear to be riding. However, they are trying to set up... Oh, dear. Archer Sparrow with a team kill. Now, let's see. Ah! Outflanking maneuver, boys and girls. Outflankers. Those dirty flankers are back again. The archers have moved across... And as you can see, behind the protection of the shield wall come the arrows. 
Arrow Storm out. Oh, there we go. Crossbowman James taken out by food. The trouble is these guys are literally out in the open and they do not have any protection. They really need to get behind this bunch of people. So the poor old grenadiers here really not having a good time of it. They don't have the cover to hide behind and that's really what's going to happen for them at the same time as the cavalry comes charging in on the archers. The poles are out and a first kill there. A uh, lovely kill there from uh, Ghost onto Mayo or Mao. And you can see them now charging in there. Oh, but he's been stopped and his horse has been assassinated. And any minute now, he's going to follow suit. And he's, got, he's got shields front and back. Now, that obviously helps him protect. And he was able to get up there. But it looks like the 37th and the 33rd are having a mass battle. Oh, goodness me. Look at that. But... Bob Malog with multiple axes in the front of his shield. And you can see now, final members of the 33rd. There's a random guy as well. Oh, there's his depth from the 33rd, using his shield to protect himself. Moving back to the support of his team. Oh, look at that. Oh, no. Who was that who got dehorsed? That's Ryder Bulldog. So he gets out his uh, Nordic war axe and is ready to attack. So... Here come the Berserkers. The Nordic Berserkers moving up towards guard Kieran. Yeah, okay, that was probably a bad idea there, Kieran. As we look behind him, the, look at those axes come flying over the pre-axe charge, I suppose you could say, as the 37th foot and the 33rd are still having battles as the 15th. Look at that. So the 15th and the 8th were all having a mass melee. This is just fantastic to watch, isn't it? Now, the trouble is, is they've now got these guys here moving up. The 15th moving into support. Under the shield wall of more 15ths. So looking good here. Let's have a look at the numbers. 102 versus 90. It won't tell me the number of dead, unfortunately. But, you know, hey-ho. Oh, nice stab there. So let's see if we can follow in. Find out. There we go. So here is the section of the 77Y behind the shield wall. Now, I pretty much guarantee you can say that this man here is the... What's the word? The architect of this particular strategy as it seems to be proving quite successful as you can see by the number of arrows in the shields all it takes is a lucky shield over the top now bear in mind these guys here okay so that's a painful arrow i have to say and an axe straight through mal's leg so he's he's not so good colonel barbs colonel barbs has died to knight radwell stabbed in the gizzards and so you can see these guys continuing to fire from behind the shield wall. The shield wall taking a little bit of damage. And the people, as you can see, firing at the legs. Possibly, we'll have to wait and see what's going on over here. Because look at all these axes. Lord Hovis with an arrow in his quiver. And multiple. There we go. Now, what's going to happen? That looks to me like a collection of the Swadian Knights. It is. So they are still a force to be reckoned with. Yep, there you go. Knights are killing guy. 15th Archer Sharko. And we are now watching them as they are moving in. The 15th versus the 77Y. Now, who's that? Who's that? Oh, no, that's the 33rd Jenk. So here is the wall of the 77Y. Looking like veritable hedgehogs, as you can see. There we go. The charge has been given. They're charging in. And they could, and the knights also come charging in at the same time as the melee is incurring. Look at that. Multiple kills into the 15th archers from Slayer Boy and Brad Apple and Radwell. This is all good stuff. This is all fantastic stuff here. Let's see. There's Lord Hovis in there protecting his kin, so to speak. There's Jester Jockey. Oh no, that's a last here being stabbed. As Tyr fighting for his life, he's got to watch out. He's got to watch out. Oh, a little bit of a team stab there. Oh, knocked to the floor, his jock at the moment. Oh, and look at this. This is, oh, this is insane. This is fantastic. Oh, no. <laughs> and As Tyr gets team killed by Doozle. <laughs> 
Yep, that's about normal. So, now, funnily enough, actually, strangely enough, Malekith actually survived. Oh, my God, look at all those arrows. That is a shitload of arrows. And yet more enemy are now approaching with their massive, huge shields. Prince Brum and his followers. There we go, the charge has been given. They're now charging into battle, Major Malekith at the same time as... Oh, look! Horsey attached, beautifully timed. Look at that, beautifully timed by the 77Y. Except for, obviously, uh, Jack the Mean, who is now Jack the Dead. There's Sir Token, complete with an axe in his horse. And damn near team killing his own free people. So there's a, there's a few guys left here. A couple of guys with the short swords and the... Oh, look at that. Nice kill there into Corporal Ryan. And let's see. Oh, look at that. Fantastic horse over the top. Oh, PFC Ernie gets taken down. Look at this last man standing. They've got to be careful. There we go. Auriculus finishes off Samalu. And who is the last man? Berserker Warlorder, oh, chopped and killed by Malekith. Fantastic stuff. So Malekith now reorganizing the troops, getting ready to move out. So you can see now what they've got there is they've got standard swords. They've got uh, nice pikes to deal with horses. And you still have a contingent of the knights for the Swadians. Now these guys are going to charge in as quickly as possible after this guy knocked out of the way, going to try and barge his shield down, there we go, his shield's down, he's about to have a very bad day, and the kingdom of Swadia is victorious. Moving on to the next round. And so we return to the battlefield. Now, obviously, you could say that the Nords here have a slight advantage, they do spawn quite close to the river. So the good thing is they don't have to worry about getting the powder wet, because they ain't carrying any bloody powder. So, there is the king of the Nords, Senkris himself, looking very Nordic. Along with his Skarls, with their fine rounded shields. Complete with the gentleman, there's Lieutenant Anders, with his custom made shield. So, oh my goodness, what's this? Colonel Barbs. <laughs> what the hell? Some G shit, yo. So there is Colonel Barbs. With fine moustache in the Nordic tradition. Fine beard of Nunny next to him. And everyone then decides to cross the river. <laughs> what is he doing? Bester Archer Cosmo. Practicing his melee technique as they are all getting into position behind this wonderful shield wall from the 15th. All these gestiers, complete with this guy who is a insult to nature, as you can see. So look at these long bows. Goodness me, these are so long. Imagine the power required in the forearms to actually pull that long bow back. But bear in mind that, uh, you know, around this sort of era, oh dear, what's going on over here? Around this sort of era, the longbow, you know, would have changed things up quite considerably. Especially did in the medieval times, because uh, on one occasion, one uh, one longbow guy um, shot an arrow that not only went through the plate armour of his... Oh dear. Plate armour of the knight who was on the horse... It went through the chainmail underneath and the leather underneath, straight through the leg, through the armour of the horse and into the horse's flank. That's the kind of penetration that you get from these kind of things. And uh, so, yeah, the longbow was a massive, massive change and gave the English a huge advantage for quite some time. So, ride a bulldog. If I remember right, I'm trying to think, where was that? It wasn't, no, it wasn't Eeps, that was World War Two. Oh, God, I'm try, I can't remember the name of the battle where it changed it all. Oh, well, it was English versus the French. Poitiers? No, it wasn't Poitiers. Oh, well, I'll remember it eventually, at some point. Or somebody kind enough in comments will remind me. Now. 
That looks to me like a shield ball. And the Budgenator has suicided. They've lost their leader. Oh no. So you can see the Knights. The Knights versus the Nordic Cavalry. Or the Nordic Knights as you can see. Oh! Head to head. So you can see here. Nordic Knights having a bit of a crash going on here. Pole arms everywhere. The Guard Gren all now up on their horses as you can see. Going after the Nordic enemy. It's Kulain Court. Oh, looking for the enemy. Chasing after those Nords. Now the trouble is, is they're going to have a problem because these guys, while more armoured as you can see, with the chainmail means that the horses are heavier. They've got more hit points, but they're not as fast. So they will not be able to catch up the Nords in a chase. So they've got to use a little bit of cunning and guile. And the Nords also have to make use of that advantage. So let's see. Arrows coming in. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Multiple arrows coming in towards the 33rd. Look at those. Oh my goodness. Look at this. This is fantastic. 33rd. Colonel Leonidas in the back there. Oh dear. A few arrows. Look at this. This is a fantastic shield wall. Absolutely fantastic. With a line of the 8th Royal Guard. Did I just see that name? What I thought. Smelly chicken. Yes. Thank you. So brutal. And you can see here. The 77Y behind Major Malekith and the Shield Ball. So you can see there a little bit of fire. Oh, it looks like they're going to have to maybe raise it a little bit. Oh, Thomas with a long distance headshot. Oh, fantastic. As we fly through the arrow storms, going back and forth. God, this is frightening. Imagine going through this sort of thing in real life. So there's Cadet Son of Mars with a lovely design on his shield. So here are the longbowmen behind. Oh, what's going on? They're now being snuck up on by Clippity Clops. Yeah, the enemy knights. The knights of Swadia are now moving. Now the trouble is these guys now, including this guy here, Archer Walrus, determined not to leave. Look at that, brave man. Unfortunately, he may not be brave for that long, as he'll probably get a pole arm through his face. So, there you go. Walrus decides to leave. And, oh dear, who crashed into that? Knights of Trouble. Oh dear. Oh, he's going to have problems. He's going to lose his horse at some point. Let's see, he's got an arrow sticking out of his leg. Multiple arrows sticking out of his horse's bum. That can't be good for him. So, we're watching the Gasteers now as they're making their way out from this position. As you've now got a line of troops moving up. The 77Y put... This is... this. You know what this reminds me of? The way that they're pushing up as a line? This reminds me of... Oh dear. Okay. It reminds me to a certain degree... Of 300 with a shield ball. Which is fantastic. And in come the enemy cavalry. The enemy knights coming in to take out the Gasteers. Oh, oh, barging to the floor. Mass barge going on there as Jerome V kills one of his teammates. Bradders gets shot in the face with an arrow. And Dutch Ref comes charging in with his teammates. Oh, look at that. Fantastic stuff here. As you can see, poor old Scrotum SMH under a massive amount of attack. Gasteer Jerome V... Also now deciding to flee. Looks like they've broken and they are on their way back. So it looks like the armed forces here of Swadia now sorting themselves out to getting themselves ready for the eventual shield wall. As over the other side come a bunch of Nords. So here we go. The Nords now advancing in a shield wall. You can see them trying to use those shields to prevent themselves from getting hit by multiple fire. Still the occasional high shot from the crossbowmen taking out members. As you can see, oh look at that, that's fantastic. Right through his helmet. 
So now they're using the shield ball and they're jumping over the top of the shield ball. Obviously, it doesn't always work in the case of Berserker Crazed. Out come the axes. Look at those axes. And there the Huskars come charging in as there's loads of guys just jumping for extra range. Oh dear, and in come a charge from the rear by Knight Sir Radwell and his additional forces. So these guys are going to have a problem as they are being attacked from all directions. 37th, the regular devil. And now the troopers moving in, Corporal Ryan moving in. Look at that, look at that. And then now, oh dear, that... See, this is a trouble when they're commanded by somebody who plays a lot of Total War, like Mal, is that you saw them come round to the left and round to the right so that not only could they attack them from the sides and the front, but they could stop them running away at the same time. And I think it's fair to say that the 37th Regiment stand absolutely, n or the 15th, I should say, stand very little chance here of making it out alive. Very nasty indeed, as these guys fighting for survival against mass attack here. Oh, look, the 8th Royal Guard brothers there. And Yatsi and Dash, all taking out multiple members of the Riders. So you can see here, Denoir, with his sword in hand, and falling in the river. Oh, nice kill attempt. Oh, and then failing. So you can see here, multiple members of the Nordic forces are being cut to pieces. And also, obviously, the odd tin kill in there as well. So let's see. Too much cavalry. Yeah, it was it was it was a tad unfortunate for the Nords. So there's 77 Y Zetan going in, going after it. Ah, oh, there we go. Yatsi taken down. So, as you can see, oh, there's Prince Brum. The prince has been killed. The Prince of the Nords has been dropped and they're waiting for an opportunity. So there's there's the King and the final man, Son of Mars, is, is completely killed, killed to death. And we are now moving on to the next round. And we are back after a map change. So, as you can see, here are all the teams. Swadia versus the Nords. Numbers are a little bit off, you can see, 92 versus 75. But, we shall see how they proceed. There, of course, is Buckethead himself. Complete with Mossmans and Friends. Harry hippies, a lot of them. Lord Hobus with the large pole. Sir Doomfinger and the king. It's only a shame that the king can't have like a little crown on the top of his head like they used to have in medieval times. That was quite cool actually. So, never mind. Maybe in the new version, Banner Lord, that'd be good to see. Somebody with a king's uh, crown crest on the top of his ha helmet. No, 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 just don't. Don't go there. So, here are the crossbowmen. Led by crossbowmen punishment. The knights moving out. There's Slayer Boy with an additional shield on his back. So he's decided not to go with additional javelins and spears and stuff. And has now decided to give himself extra cover with another shield. So, oh dear, they've crashed. And Brad Apple's just been shot in the head, so a good start for young Brad. So, here is a line of Haskals. And, oh dear. Jack, no, looks like a little bit of technical problem going on here. Jack the Mean, uh, living up to his name, unfortunately. Crossbowman James taken down. Let's see if we can find out what's going on. Yep, yeah, there we go. Those opportunistic Nords came in, taking down the crossbowmen. There's a Ricolus in there trying to defend himself. And there is a Malekith also trying to defend himself. So you can see now, because they've got the under attack by horses, they are using 
the pole arms to protect themselves against that horsey attack. But they now also have... Oh, there we go. Lovely stab there. Does that guy manage to get up? Yes, he does. Oh, Malekith gets barged slightly. And uh, you can see him trying to deal with any horsey attacks. But, you know, it's... He's looking pretty good so far. Unfortunately, the large majority of the crossbowmen that Mao was setting up for, unfortunately, are pretty much dead, which is going to be a problem for them. <clears throat> However, here is the 8th Royal Guard, looking resplendent as usual. Don't those guys look wonderful? Look at them. Fine red tunics. <laughs> so here is Slayer Boy. Following up with, there's Malekith there, complete with a javelin right in his shield. And here come remaining members of the crossbowmen. So, shooting from between the shields of their protectors. So, you can see them there. Now, this guy here... Could be having some problems. There's Tom Letts. Oh, look at that. Rapid fire. Oh my goodness. Javelins. Lots of javelins. Oh, poor old Mossman's taken down already. Oh, look at these guys. Here are the bowmen, of course. And Ernie, unfortunately, being shot in the head. There's one of the few members of the Knights of the Nordic Knights remaining. So there's Cadet Food. And fire coming in to these guys who are charging in. Look at, look at all the arrows. Look at that. Oh, my God. That's insane. Jesus Christ. These guys need to get in there fast. And that's the reason they're holding up the attention of the axe throwers. That's a really good plan there by the eighth. Really impressive. Oh, look out. It's a horse. And it's a knight who just slid on his face. Here we go, night on night action. Let's see, Guard Denoir. So you can see now the 8th Royal taking casualties as they pushed up on the right side. Um, but it was the large amount of... Look, look, holy crap! That's a lot of axes. Uh, oh, God. And you've got to feel bad for that guy who got not only axed in the head, but shot in the balls as well. War is not pretty in this era boys and girls well war's not pretty in any era to be honest but it's less so in this one so you can now see the wall of Ascals here trying their best to defend against the attacking cavalry there's the 37 foot with their shield wall oh this is just fantastic just so much so much history here it's oh god i'm nerding out i'm nerding out there's guard brothers in there as well they're trying to deal with the 37th and there is Knights of Killing Guy making his path, his way past Axe Field. The Field of Choppers. The Battle of Axe Central. Knight token in there as well. Oh, goes for a quick swing on one of the enemy. Let's see how things are going. Mass stabbings going on. Oh, Major Malekith. Oh, look at this. Supported by his friends. And... <laughs> Supported by a nice team kill. Oh, oh, hang on. Do you see that? Someone just Grand Heft Horse. Grand Heft Horse just occurred. This is unfortunate. So it looks like they're now trying to reform their numbers. So you can see here, Gamelfar fighting against Corporal Ryan. So, oh dear. Looks like the horse has just gone down. Who is that? That's Knights of Killing Guy now trying to deal with the enemy who are attacking him. Likes of Nordic goers on and people of evil intent. Oh, nice there. Saved by his teammate. So Ryan there killing Zekt with the help and protecting Killing Guy. So that's very good indeed. As you can see, Guard Denoir getting in there. Unfortunately, getting taken down. There's Bioacid. Oh, wow. That axe is nasty. Holy crap, that is a really nasty piece of kit. So, and Bioway, how the hell did that happen? I'm not sure Bioway just swung his axe backwards and took him out. The king is under attack. Protect the king! Protect... Okay, maybe not. Um, so... <laughs> and both the kings died in that 
small period of time. Literally, in 30 seconds, both the kings were taken out. Just killing guys, hitting a woman. How dare he? Well, the trouble is the woman's kind of fighting back. So here we go. Let's see. Can killing guy beat a woman? This is going to be interesting because if he doesn't, he's never going to hear the end of it. Out comes the large axe. Oh. Oh, dear. It's not looking good. And killing guy gets killed by a girl. Oh, dear. Will his shame never end? So you've also got this knight in the middle here. Prof Troll. And you've got this guy here, Major Malekith, last man standing. Look at him going in with his spear, trying to take out that armoured horse. So you've got Prof Troll in there as well. Oh, Knight Sarad will take him down. He's trying to take down that horse is annoying him. However, coming in to support Prof Troll. Oh, Prof Troll also trying to deal with things. Let's see. Let's watch Malekith. See how he gets on. He's still got his teammate around him to assist. And they're still trying to take out that last man. He's focused on that horse. Because that horse is the danger. So let's see. So now moving on. Cashing up with his teammates. And there we go, as you can see. Well, quite. Going in for the stab again. Going in for the stab a second time. Oh, look at that. Fantastic play there by Mao. Lovely polearm work. And out comes the sword. Looking to do a block. Another attack. And he blocks it again. Goes in, but the sword get Oh! Slash across the face of Malekith. He's under pressure now. Let's see, see who he's fighting. He's fighting under Asgir. So he's having a few problems here. Let's see how he's getting on. Oh, nice blocking going on. He's coming under attack from multiple people, though. This is going to be a problem for Malekith. He's fighting for his life as we watch. There we go. One of the shields is taken out. But he's got another guy behind him who's trying to deal with him behind him. He's got a shield on his back. But he's taken out by Lieutenant Anders. Yeah, leave his body alone. Disgusting. And Marksman Mr. Blue finally taken down. Crossbone and green pills. And Marksman Greatsword deciding to cheese it, complete with axe in his back. Oh, nice Prof Troll with a nice save on his teammate. Lovely play there. So there's one of the... Oh, he turns and goes for a polearm stab. Can he do it? Oh, so unlucky. Greatsword taken down. And looks like Prof Troll is one of the few people... Oh, I was about to say, few people left standing, but he ain't standing anymore. So, Prof Troll versus multiple enemies. Takes down one. And unfortunately, cannot take them all. So, there we go. Moving on to the next round, boys and girls. And so, in this fine area, littered with trees... And occasionally sparse grass. We come to the final round of this native warband line battle. Here are the Nords moving out. Find rounded shields protecting them front and back. Archers to the right. Cavalry or knights to the far right. Spearmen. The Gastiers also in there as well, looking fine in their combination of chainmail and leather. Let's see if we can lock in on the Swadians. So, the 37th, there's Colonel Barbs. More lines of troopers, look at this. Bob Malog from the 33rd. The 8th Royal, looking wonderful as always. And there is the King. The King of the Swadians. A noble dynasty, no doubt. Ah, the 77Y crossbowman. Oh, what's this? 
Ah, 37th champion Chadinator. He's out there. Shucking his javelins as his mates are shooting past his head. So, here we go. Oh. This must be, yet. Yeah, this is the 77 wide detachment. There's Corporal Ryan. Jack Lamine. Aztir. Abercrampy. So these guys up. Oh, they've just turned. Out come the pole arms because they're under attack by cavalry. And they go in with the pole arms. All of these guys armed with pole arms by the looks of it. For dealing with... Oh, look at that. Aztir actually killed someone. I don't believe it. So that was an attack by the cavalry, well dealt by the 77 wide detachment. And the 37th here, now forming some kind of defensive circle. They don't have the power of the pole arms, they've just got standard swords. So hopefully the 77 wide detachment may move to support. We'll have to wait and see. Great sword there, ducking. Trying to avoid arrows, let's see. Oh, goodness me, look at that. Mass. Oh. Oh, that's harsh. So, let's see. Look look at this poor guy. Look at him. So many... Oh, look. So many things in him. It's unreal. So, he's now being chased down by the Swadian Guard. There we go. He's taken down. What's going on? Barge to the floor once, twice. And a final kill going in, maybe. Let's see. There we have it. Prince Brum, the Chadinator, killing Yankf, Yankav, so. So, let's see. Looks like the knights are having a little bit of a fun. There is, of course, Sir Doomfinger, mighty knight of the Swadian Republic, I suppose you could call it. There wouldn't be a republic, would it, of the Swadian Kingdom, my apologies. And he just drives through people, he, despite the fact he's got an arrow in his back. Which I have to say, it's pretty good armor if he can still fight with an arrow. Whoop, jump over the people. Oh dear, 33rd Captain Mr. Stefan has just snuffed it. Never mind. So it looks like this attack here on this particular section has been unsuccessful thanks to the support of their cavalry friends. And let's see what's going on. As yet, it's time for javelins. It's javelin o'clock, and it's at, it's at o'clock. It is indeed. Oh, and then in come the cavalry. In come the knights to try and take out these guys, just barging through them like a steam train. Oh, wow, that's just mad. And the 37th champion Chadinator takes a javelin to the face. And Aztir gets an axe in the face. Ask, ask him a question quickly. And in comes the mass melee. Look at this. This is so brutal. There's obviously going to be team kills in there as well. Because that's kind of what happens in melee in this game. All the damn time. But as you can see here. I think it's... Oh dear. The little devil just got drop kicked. <laughs> really? Really? Yeah, I'm afraid so, the little devil. <laughs> so, it's not looking good for Frodo and Predator, who are the last men standing. So, let's see. As we follow across the battle. Aha! Frodo and Predator, hiding behind a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Not anymore. Oh dear, and there you have it boys and girls, that has been it for this native line battle. I hope you've enjoyed yourself as much as we have and as much as the teams have. It was great fun. And hopefully we'll bring you some more. You have to wait and see. Thanks guys, we'll see you next time.